years ago, I was living with my then boyfriend in a one bedroom apartment in a little mountain town. It was a half basement unit, so the bottom of all of our windows were level with the ground outside. It was also an older apartment, and not all the windows could fully lock. One day, my boyfriend comes home from work while I'm laying on the sofa and immediately runs up to the window near me and looks out of it frantically. He then goes to look out every other window in his house. Then he walks around outside, looking in the windows. When he comes back from this confused exploit, I ask him what's going on and why he's being in a spaz. I... I think I just walked up on a dude looking in the window at you. He took off as soon as I walked up. This is what he told me. This was, naturally, very unsettling. But after discussing it and considering the time of day, it was about 2 p.m. and the number of people out and about around the complex at the time We came to the conclusion that it was just a curious neighbor or something passing through or and just happened to take a quick glance. After that, we kind of forgot about it. If only that was the end. For the next couple of months, odd stuff happened here and there. Someone would knock on the door occasionally, then I would answer and no one was there. I'd find things in my apartment that I wasn't familiar with, or things like clothing items would vanish. I didn't really think twice of it, any of it, until one night. My boyfriend and I were arguing around one or two in the morning, and we were being pretty loud. We were standing in the kitchen face to face. His back was into an open window and the blinds up halfway and I was facing it. Amidst our arguing, I glanced behind him at the window, thinking I saw the reflection of my face in it. The window was open. It wasn't my face. There was a man with his face pressed almost against the window screen, watching us. Given the fact that we were arguing it, it was late, I thought for a moment It might have been a concerned neighbor walking up to the window to speak to us. A main walkway for the complex was right on the other side of the window. So I spoke to him. Hello? Can I help you? I asked a little aggressively, thinking a neighbor was intruding on our privacy. He responded to this by staring, unwavered and cold right at me. His face did not change expression. He did not blink or move. He looked right at me in a way I've never been looked at before or since. In this instant, I also realized that because of the window being level with the ground, the only way this man's face could be where it was, was if he was lying on the ground outside the apartment or crouched and contorted to look into the window. My heart sank. I buried my face in my boyfriend's chest and closed my eyes in fear. My boyfriend up to this point thought I was messing with him. When I buried my face in his chest, only then did he say, is there someone really at the window? I whispered. Yes. He felt my fear and took a moment before he turned around. By the time he did, the man was gone. It was at this point I started to think about all the little odd occurrences that I'd been experiencing, and I'd assumed the worst. I filed a police report with this description, and my brother loaded my apartment with weapons to protect me or at least inform this peeping Tom that I was armed. After that night, my boyfriend and my brother were on high alert. 
there were a couple times when my brother came over that he saw a sketchy dude hanging around, and even one time he saw him at my window. He tried to follow him discreetly, but the guy took off running as soon as my brother stepped in his direction. The last night I had an experience with this man. I was sitting home alone on my sofa. My brother was at work at a restaurant about two blocks away. He had picked me up from work an hour earlier, and we sat on the sofa together. Then he kissed me and he left for work, locking the door behind him. After he left, I continued to sit on the couch on Reddit for a while, just in silence. After about an hour of me sitting there in silence, I heard a door creak open. It's a small apartment, so I could see the bedroom and bathroom doors from the couch. All I had to do was lean a little to the left. I assumed it was one of my cats coming out of the bathroom. So you can imagine my shock when I leaned over and to see that the door that's opening is to the water heater closet. I took to my right and I see both of my cats sound asleep on the couch. I look back to the door and it's still creaking open very slowly. It opens up just for me to see in it a set of fingers wrapped around the door, easing the door ever so gently and as quietly as possible. That was going to be a no from me, dog. I ran barefooted out the door into the snow and ran to the street of my boyfriend's work. I called the cops when everyone was back to check out the apartment. Of course, he was gone. At that point, my boyfriend packed all of his stuff, went to stay with my parents, and six months later, moved 1,000 miles away from that town. And that was the end of it. I initially found this subreddit around that time, and I was tr trying to find other stories similar to mine, or people to talk to who had experienced something like this. I had intended to write my story here eventually, and I figured after this week's events, I had to do so. I live a thousand miles from where all of this happened, so a part of me thinks there's no way this person could have found me. But last week, I heard a knock on the front door of my apartment. I was expecting a package, so it was a delivery driver and I didn't answer. I'd go get the package later. Then they knocked again, and again, and again. The third one made me feel uneasy. So I waited a good 20 minutes to go check the door. When I did, there was no package, no note, no nothing. Someone was just knocking. Although it made me uneasy, I didn't initially think back to my stressful experience back in my last town. Then, two days ago, I went out to get groceries. I have a little patio and I go out there in the mornings just to chill or check my plants a lot and I've been known to leave it unlocked in the day on accident. I never thought it was a huge deal until I came home from the store two days ago and the deadbolt to my apartment was locked. The deadbolt that can only be locked, only be locked from the inside of the apartment, period. I assumed someone robbed me and I dumbly left my patio unlocked. So I called my sister. I called the current new boyfriend. I waited for people to be with me and I went into my apartment through the sliding glass patio door. Nothing was out of place. Nothing of value was stolen. At this point, my heart sank. Nothing was touched. Nothing was stolen. Someone was inside my apartment just because they wanted to be inside my apartment. I told my boyfriend about my stalker and he is not taking this lightly like my past boyfriend. 
I filed a police report. We checked for recording devices and cameras. He put up nest cameras all over the place, and we are on high alert. I really, truly hope this is a coincidence. But if this man really followed me across multiple state lines, there is no one on this earth I am less interested in meeting. It was about five years ago. I was only 15 and I was on vacation with my parents and a few of their friends. These friends of theirs also had daughters who was about four years younger than me. One day we went to the water park nearby. Our parents thought I was responsible enough considering my age and asked me to look after their friends' daughters. And of course, I agreed. So here we are, running around the park, trying different slides and queuing for various attractions. One of them was really fun, so we usually queued for that one. That's when things got very ugly. So we were just talking about random stuff when two men in their 50s started laughing at what we were saying. We hadn't even noticed they were behind us in the queue, so we just turned and looked at them. And we gave them a smile, but then we just returned to our conversation. Then, I heard them clearly saying some ugly things louder than they needed so that we would hear them. They said things like, Oh, those bikinis are really nice. And maybe we should ask him to come with us. For a moment, with the corner of my eye, I saw one of them touching himself over his costume. And they were getting closer to our backs. Too close. So I immediately saw a lot of red flags. And I just thought it was going to get worse and worse. My friend was clearly confused, since she was also younger. Then one of the men tapped me on the shoulder and asked if we were alone. I immediately replied, No, my dad is here. So they scanned the area, wondering if my dad was actually there, watching the whole thing. I saw the occasion and immediately ran away, taking my friends by the hand and just going as far away as possible from those guys. About five minutes had passed. I was looking for my parents, but since I didn't have my phone with me, I couldn't find them. The place was very crowded, and it was also in one of the biggest water parks in my region. We decided to just go to another attraction and ignore the whole thing. Well, what happened next left us all speechless. While queuing for the attraction, the guys from before found us and said, Why are you girls running? We just wanted to have some fun with you. And I managed to reply to them, We don't want to. Stay away. Saying it louder so that other people in the queue would hear me as well. Some teenagers turned around my age and they noticed something was off. And they pretended to know us by saying, Hey, where have you guys been? Do you want to go on the slide with us? And I also went along with them, trying to get those guys away from us. They apparently gave up and left the queue. I immediately thanked those guys and explained to them the whole thing. And they said they would stick by us for the whole day in case those dudes were stalking us. At this point, the day is almost over, so we were heading to the changing rooms. Our newly made friends told us they would wait outside while we were changing. I was very grateful for their kindness, because after that, we never saw those old men again. Or, so I thought. While I'm changing, I hear a man's voice coming from one of the stalls. It sounded like one of those men. I was thinking, it's, it's not possible. I must be imagining it. But then I see him getting out of the stall with a child who I assume is his daughter since she was calling him daddy he was helping her get changed for a second our eyes met he was very surprised since he hadn't noticed me and he immediately dashed out of the changing room 
I'm petrified and, and I'm scared to go out. My friends finished changing and we then caught up with the other guys, met our parents and said goodbye to our saviors. To this day, I still think that if those boys hadn't helped us, we would have been constantly harassed and stalked by those dudes for the whole day. Or maybe even worse. So, to the two men who stalked me and my friend in the water park, let's not meet. This is my first ever Reddit post which I'm writing on my phone, so I'm not sure about formatting. I'm posting here because I saw a video on this Reddit thread and I just wanted to share my experience of who I never want to meet again. This might be rather boring, it's definitely not the high stakes kind of thriller stories I've been reading on here, but it did creep me out when I was young. Also, it might be long because I'm usually quite detailed. I got my first job at 15, working in the local convenience store for under table paychecks until I turned 16 and they could, you know, legally hire me. They needed staff they could underpay and I needed money to support my family. Plus the store was literally 10 minutes from my house so I could go home for lunch or go jogging in the field next to the store. I'm a very friendly person and I love to make conversation because it helped the day go by faster. One morning, a guy, maybe late 20s and 30s, came into the store to receive a click and collect package and the system was being really slow, so I asked him about his previous evening just to make small talk. It had been Guy Fox night, so it was my topic of conversation with everyone that day. He didn't appear to want to talk much and so I overcompensated with my own talking, so there wasn't any awkward silence while the parcels were scanning, and I told him about how my dog hates fireworks, so I stay inside with him. He asked me when the store closes. He asked me when the store closes, so many people at the store ask this, and so that's why I didn't find it weird. I told him the store closes at 3 p.m. because it's a Sunday, he left with his parcels and I didn't really think of him at all. I took my break at 12 and went on my usual laps around the field after getting rid of my work uniform. And it was fairly cold, so nobody else was on the field. I'm on the opposite side and I look to my left because I'm dramatically singing along the Hamilton in my headphones on the children's swing set in the park. So, because it's pretty cold and now I'm pretty embarrassed that I'm being watched. I finished my jog there and finished my break inside the stock room just drinking tea. Again, this didn't faze me because there's always weirdos hanging around my area and many of them I knew because of how close the community is. I finished my shift at 4pm after cleaning and restocking for the next day and I was let out through the back exit car park that shared with the local pub. Funnily enough, I have many childhood memories before it closed down due to my parents and I living on this council estate my whole life. Some guy was sitting on the wall there with his coat hood pulled up. This is slightly strange because nothing around the area was open and hadn't been for at least an hour, especially not the pub. But I was 15 and I'd taken the same walk down to the main road every single shift without any issues. I put my headphones in with a slight pinch of anxiety because as soon as I moved past this guy, I see him jump up from the wall from the corner of my eye. I don't put the music on. I just listen to his footsteps follow me until he is next to me, gesturing for me to remove my headphones. As you probably guessed, it's the same guy from the morning shift. I'm really confused at this point because it's the first time I've seen him in my local store. We have a lot of regulars, and I would even know most of them by address because we saved everyone's newspapers. But I'd never seen him before, only to encounter him twice in one day. I removed my headphones and asked what he wanted. He asked for the time. I assumed because of the council estate I lived on that he was perhaps going to mug me. 
it's happened before. So I told him it's around 4pm without taking my phone out. He then proceeds to pretend he only just recognizes me from the store and tells me he thought I finished at 3pm. I'd watch enough true crime to be guessing he had waited for me to finish my shift for an hour. I was having a mild panic attack by this point because it was a lazy cold Sunday so nobody was around and I wasn't yet at the main road. So I continued to talk to him while he questioned me about how long I've worked at the store. I know it's stupid to engage, but but he was keeping my pace. And the main road was only down the street where I thought our paths would diverge by then. He asked me if I worked there all the time, and in an effort to dissuade him from trying to hit on me, I told him I was still studying although I wouldn't tell him at which institution. I, me being a minor didn't seem to deter him. Mind you, at the age I am now, being 20, I only just look like I'm 15. Like I said, he was undeterred and tried asking me for my number, in which I told him that I didn't have a phone. It was an obvious lie because I had my headphone plugged in into the phone and I was tightly gripping it in my pocket. He brought this up and I told him, I mean, that it's a shared phone and that I don't have my own. Despite this being an obvious lie, he continued. I was on the main road now, but he had not stopped talking and I was on my quickest way home, the path I usually took was through a dark wooded area and then a shady parking lot. I decided to go the longer way to keep on a public road so he wouldn't know where my home was located. He asked me for my Facebook and I desperately wanted to get away from him at this point, so I thought if I gave him my Facebook and then changed the name as soon as I had the chance, he wouldn't be able to find me. I don't know why I didn't just give him a fake name. I was young and stupid and honestly I was just scared. No cars had passed by yet and he was still talking to me. After this I asked him which way that he lived and he told me only a short while up ahead. And then he asked me if I was interested in coming along with him. I said I live in this other direction and I would say goodbye now but that we could speak later. Again. I know I'm an idiot, but I thought if he thought that I was interested in speaking to him, he would leave me alone. And because of my experience talking to people in my job, this luckily came off very casually and truthfully. It worked, and I crossed the road and as soon as I was out of sight, I legged it back down the side of the road and got home. When home, I went to change my name, but found that he had already messaged me. Although I, had, although I hadn't told him my middle name that was a part of my Facebook, which he brought up to me in his first message, I messaged him back explaining I had no interest in him and instantly blocked his account. I felt so stupid for even letting him have my real name that I couldn't bring myself to tell my parents. Instead, I would ask my brother to meet me at the store at the end of my shifts. It was only Sundays I finished an hour late because I wanted them to help me pick out ingredients for dinner those nights. My first shift went back. He was waiting outside in the same area, but my brother was with me and we went out the front way so I could see him waiting there but didn't have to walk past him. After this, I decided I couldn't keep getting escorts home and told my work I needed to leave at different times in case he followed me. They wanted to tell the authorities, but I refused because it was a relatively small thing and I was working illegally too and I didn't want to get them in trouble. I finally told my parents and they told a few people in the neighborhood to be wary. I started getting the bus home from school because I was worried he had my Facebook and now knew where I went to school. 
The next time I saw him, he came into the store again to collect parcels. I told my manager next to me and she served him, while also telling him that they would call someone if he continued to harass me. I was scared about all the information he had now from my Facebook because I was a young kid. My privacy settings were crap and I held my county, my school, hundreds of pictures of my friends in my neighborhood and at school, all of them tagged. Well, luckily, nothing more happened after that. I saw him once on the bus with my mother a year later and again while I was in college at a shopping center. I had quit my job a little while after all this to work somewhere legally when I finally turned 16 to earn more money, and I live in a different city now. He doesn't scare me anymore, but I definitely am more private about my life on social media. Everything is private, and I don't provide my real information for certain sites anyway. Well, this is just a little story about my experience having a, excuse the pun, a minor stalker. Obviously, I still blame myself for being dumb and having all my private information out there. But I thought, I thought it would be interesting to post. So, dear middle-aged stalker, let's not meet again. When I was around 14, I had an appointment at the bank with my mom. She wanted to set up an account for me. So one afternoon, we were downtown in the bank building, and I remember feeling really bored by the whole process. It was that kind of dry financial stuff, and I would rather have stayed home to play games or something. My mom noticed after a few minutes and then confirmed with the bank employee that I was actually just needing us to sign some papers in the end. And in the end, I really didn't need to be there. Since we were already downtown, my mom gave me a bit of money and told me to go buy myself some new clothes. I usually don't care about my appearance back then, so I usually kind of look sloppish. The whole thing would still take about an hour or so. It would be fine if I was back by then. I went to the mall first, since I knew there were some cheap stores in there. While I was browsing some clothes, I noticed an older man, around 60 I guess. There wasn't anything creepy or remarkable about him. I just thought it was weird seeing someone that age in a store predominantly for young people. I then proceeded to see this guy a few more times in the mall. At first I shrugged it off, but after a while, I noticed he was actually following me. I even tried it out and made a little game out of it. Soon it became clear he was always near the same stores that I entered. Naive boy, besides from the fact he was following me, there was nothing weird about this old man so I couldn't have even imagined what his actual intentions were. I just thought he was some bored geezer who likes to play shop detective in his free time, and maybe he mistakenly thought I had stolen something back in the first store. Yeah, I was pretty dumb back then. When I left the mall, the guy still followed me through the city. I wasn't scared, just slightly irritated but I chose to ignore him for the time being and just took care of the shopping. When I entered the next door, he didn't seem to follow me at first, but then while I was choosing some clothes in the upper level, I noticed him again, a few shelves away. I went to the changing room. God, how can someone be that dumb? I went there to try out some stuff I was and while I was doing that, I heard slow steps, very close to the booth I was in. I knew it was him and I thought it was kinda creepy, but I still didn't get what was going on. 
He didn't linger there too long, but he still remained at the store, which I left after not buying anything. Now, at this point, I kinda had enough. After leaving the building, I immediately hid behind one of the pillars which led to the entrance. I saw him come out of the store and look for me, but he didn't notice me and went away. I thought I was rid of him. The problem was, the bank building where my mother waited was in the same direction that the stalker went. I decided it would be safer to wait a bit, so I went into the McDonald's opposite of the clothing store and I bought myself a burger. And then, while I was eating it outside of the McDonald's, the guy actually came back. At this point, I, I had had enough. It was obvious that the guy wasn't any kind of shop detective. So what the hell did he want? I was really annoyed at him for following me and creeping me out. But I was also so kind. But, uh, what was he doing? What I did next. Please never do this. I would not have done this had I known what he wanted. I lured him away. At the end of the street, there was this nice breakfast place which closes in the afternoon. So at that time, there weren't any people in the benches or in the chairs in the front of the place. I sat down on one of the benches and nervously played around with my MP3 player. I knew what I was doing was dangerous, but my curiosity just got the better of me. And as weird as it sounds, it was also kind of a thrill to be honest. It didn't take long for the stalker to sit down on the bench opposite of mine. He didn't introduce himself or ask for my name. He just started some small talk and told me he's not from here, but I looked like I could show him more. This still felt really weird to me, but I was kind of relieved as he didn't come off as a bad guy. I told him politely I didn't have time since I needed to go back to my mom soon. He asked if I had enough time to show him just one place. The park. I asked him which park did he want to go to, but he replied, any park will do. Something, something started feeling a little off here. Luckily there was one nearby, pretty easy to find, so I just started explaining directions to him, but he interrupted me, saying he wanted me to take him there personally. I agreed, and I started to lead the way, but as we were walking, neither of us said anything. I slowly realized what was happening. I froze in place. He turned back and looked at me, asking if I didn't want to go with him to the park anymore. I panicked and screamed, NO! Which caused a lot of people to turn towards us. This was happening in a busy area. He just said, uh, bye, and left, while I immediately ran back to the bank to tell my mom what happened. She was still talking to the employee from before. She was present when I told my mom I was so shook and I didn't care. My mom got angry and told me if anyone ever tried that again, I should well, put up a fight, which is really questionable advice to give a child, but that's kind of how my mom shows her support. There's a lot of stuff I left out, but I feel like this is long enough. Thank you, if you took the time to read this.